you're honest, you're poor your whole life. And in the end, you wind up dying all alone on some dirty street. For what? For nothing. For a tin star. John Stuart Mill said, Bad men need nothing more to compass their ends than that good men should look on and do nothing. This is a theme which runs heavy in this Fred Zinnemann Western. In this film, we follow a retired marshal named Will Kane, who on the day of his wedding finds out that a dangerous outlaw from his past has been pardoned and will arrive back in town on the noon train to take his revenge on Kane. As time passes, Kane finds that one by one, the people whom he had protected in the past have turned their back on him, refusing to help defend the town. His deputies, his friends, and even his wife abandon him, leaving Kane to face certain death alone. The isolation and the desperation it breeds in Kane is the main focus, and as such, High Noon is the quintessential psychological western. A wide range of factors make High Noon a great psychological western, like Zinnemann's realist, almost documentary-styled way of filming, Gary Cooper's anxiety-wrapped visage, or the most interesting aspect of High Noon, the fact that it is written in real time. This means that the story of the film progresses at the same rate as the running time of the film, so the countdown to Kane's confrontation is constant, and kept in the mind of the audience by the many clocks placed throughout the film. The growing prominence of clocks and the sound of clockwork as the film progresses builds the tone to a dramatic crescendo when the clock finally strikes 12. Unlike a Clint Eastwood or John Wayne character, Cooper's character isn't a master shot or a fearless lawman. Throughout the film, we can see Kane's feelings of dread and doubt play out on his face as the close-ups on Cooper show a whole range of emotion throughout the film, which is a stark contrast to some of the more stoic western protagonists. The portrayal of Kane as alone is central to what makes these close-ups so important. We know how Kane is feeling, and why, almost without any need for dialogue. Take a look at this scene. Here the isolation of Kane is made more noticeable by the constant cuts between him walking alone and the outlaws walking together, with the periods of low movement and high movement serve to highlight to the audience how completely alone Kane has become. And you can see it in the contrast of his fear and the confident look of the outlaws. Zinnemann does an excellent job of balancing real-time pacing with the visual motifs he has made central to High Noon. When all of these elements are put together, even waiting becomes interesting and dramatic.